Hello everybody, welcome back to SnowRunner, my hard mode playthrough. A uh, slight problem with the start of this episode, for about the first 10 minutes you'll have to bear with me. Uh, I made a mistake when I was doing the recording, I didn't notice that my microphone was muted. Uh, I know why it was muted, it was because I was recording the soundtrack of Cola Peninsula to put over the top of my other videos, but basically um, I've missed the narrative for the first 10 minutes of this video so I'm, I'm having to record these words after the event so as you can see I'm in the Azov I've got the can loaf I've deployed both of those vehicles on this map I've moved the cat fuel bunker out of the garage to fuel these two up and then I'm about to take the Azov over to the factory area with two metal beams that I've preloaded for the old crossing bridge repair and I'm doing that basically because the Crocodile and Lodestar are low on fuel and I haven't got any other supply of fuel on that side of the map so I want the Azov over there to fix the bridge and it's got a fairly large fuel tank so I can steal some fuel out of it and also it'll drag a loaf along and the loaf will be another 200 litres of fuel so it's just useful to have on that side of the map. Um, now I ignore the, the roads so the route that I take across here is Basically, I pick my way through the ice of the lake. And when I recorded it, I was really pleased with how it went. And, and I can't inject false tension to it, but it was, it was at points I didn't know if I was going to fall through the ice. It was a bit um, exciting to do as a live recording, but I don't want to just truncate that footage and have you guys see a as of plus a fixed bridge magically appear on the other side of the map. So I'm going to leave the footage in. I'm going to time lapse it and in a, in a sec I'll show you the route that I use but it's just basically I come across the lake um, picking my way through what looks like safe ice and trying to avoid falling through into the lake and, and needing spring thaw to get me out again. So yeah it was it was a good fun drive but sadly I haven't got the, the narrative from the time and I can't. I'm not the sort of person that can narrate false excitement on something that I've already recorded and done. So I, I know the outcome, therefore I can't in, introduce tension to it. So I'm going to stop this narrative here. I'm going to time lapse the drive just so that you see the drive and see me fix the bridge. And then I will, at the end of the time lapse, pick the narrative up with the Lodestar completing the factory point of interest task that I struggled with at the end of episode three. Hopefully this will all work. It'll come out, it'll make sense to you guys when you're watching the video and the next narrative from me will be the live narrative from when I recorded the episode because I did realize about 10 minutes into recording the mistake I'd made. So it's only this start that's messed up a little bit. So I'll see you over at the factory.
Right, so now we're picking up with a live narrative. Um, I will have overdubbed some footage that I don't want you guys to miss out on. So this will be a slightly strange continuity thing, but I'm now back into this is me narrating as I drive the game. I realised, I've just realised that I wasn't recording my microphone for the previous 10 minutes or so of video. So uh, hopefully I can splice this together seamlessly. But I'm back in the low star and I'm going to try and get the low star across this set of beams without doing too much damage to myself. I've done this once before. I don't understand. I can't get myself across it. Maybe I should drive the loaf around the other side. You can't get in from the other side though, I don't think. I think it's got an exit only. my head in slightly. I'm, I'm, I don't understand this area. I'm not doing a good job, am I? Um, there's got to be a way. And that was it. Look, look how easy that was when you actually bother to look. The loaf is a lot smaller than a lodestar, so it just kind of makes sense that it's an easier vehicle to do this type of thing. I'm just going to pull that lodestar over. leave a low star for now. I've, I think I've spent enough time on that. But I just need to try and get to this POI. And I thought, so I figured I could go over these pipes because to me that looks like a kind of parkour you should be able to do that type of route. But I found out in the, in or I got stuck and then I just, smaller vehicle, that looked like a better way to do it. So finally, this one, done. After the amount of effort that took, I spent on that in the last episode, I'm now really pleased to have got that out of the way. Now I've got to see if I can back out without causing myself a problem. Can I go out the same way I came in? Some of these routes are like one way, the way that the ramps go, but this one looks like I should be able to do it. Let's give it a bit of a run. That's it. Loaf go anywhere, look, won't it? Now, while I want the loaf to pull that loaf star out. Doesn't want to go, does it? Turn the engine off so I'm not wasting fuel on it. Pull it backwards out. Let's get on with it. I don't want to spend all my day on this. I don't like this. <laughs> this is this is a fiddly little task. But as long as I can get the low star free, we'll leave it at that. Call it good. Got it stuck even from that side now.
There we go. Right, so I'm going to put the lobe on the resupply zone and then I'm going to leave it here basically. I might take a bit of fuel out of it for the load star and then push on with the load star and its radar trailer. So in the... Um, I'll fix the bridge obviously. Hopefully you've seen that. Engine off. Repair myself. It's good practice. Resupply. And leave the loaf there. Move into the load star and go and steal some fuel. Lights on. I think the size of this vehicle was part of our problem. We're trying to do that task before. Can't remember if this is full or not. Let's just have a quick look. It looks like it is. No, it's not quite. So let's just steal some fuel out of the low. Sorry, low. fuel it's not enough is there so I am going to need to jump into the load to use this roof rack refuel my roof rack into the exploration unit fill that up and then load star fill that up and then whatever's left into here so I've got nearly a full tank in the low but my roof is now empty so I've thrown myself a little bit by not recording the audio of the first bit and I hope I've been able to edit that together it doesn't become a shambles for you guys uh, I do apologize for that so what's next let me have a quick look right so I think what I'm gonna do is this track walker task because it gets me onto the ice and i know it's coming into dark but it gets me onto the ice but it also there's a locked sequence that i need to explore and i think doing that with the scout and radar vehicle will just open up bits of the map for me it'll, it'll be a good thing to do and then we'll see after that what to do next so i'm not focusing on this is part of my, this is using this task as a Kind of opportunity to go off and do the scouting and see what I find. So I'm now going to come out of here and find my way around this coast back to that camp that I've already been to and then I've got to get away across this ice and learn the safe ice. In, so that's where it gets dodgy, right? Oh, I hope it doesn't get dodgy before then. But yeah, so it's unfortunate that it's dark, but what can you do? It's hard mode and I can't change it back to daylight mode. And we are full of fuel. Our boot is not full of fuel, is it? Yeah, the add-on's empty. I need to I need to fix that. I don't wanna go I don't wanna wander off with no fuel in the add-on. I'm gonna use the crop, take a bit of fuel out of the Azov which has got a fairly big fuel tank and can take it, I hope. But fuel fuel is a, <laughs> fuel is a nightmare already, because you start with virtually no fuel on this map, and therefore you, you're immediately into fuel logistic problems. And I, need, I basically need to get into a mandra and grab one of the fuel trailers and bring it back, I think. That's going to be a priority. Other than that, we carry on as we were about to do. I kind of need to reset my brain because, like I said, I messed myself up a little. Now that looks breakable. Is that breakable? Edge forward carefully. Is that breakable? Gun it and go for it. Hammer down, driver. As I was told. Right. 
Right, so I, I think this this is safe ice, isn't it? I'm fairly comfortable that that is safe ice. But that stuff is going to be bad ice in the middle there, isn't it? That strip. And then those chunks of blue broken ice look bad. Right, that grey stuff looks bad as well. I don't like the look of that. What's the amount? I'm just being careful enough that I could back up if I... Because I've got to learn this ice. I've got to learn what's safe and what's not. So this is the first of my marks for this track walker task. And again, I don't know that I don't know what to trust here. And what? Right, that's creaking and groaning like crazy. I don't like that. That's making me nervous. That is breaking. That trade is not helping me at the moment. Have I got enough? I've got enough clearance. So what what would be safe here then? Is it is it literally stick to this snowy outcrop cover? Is this safe? Get the trailer back on a rope. Try and get it hooked back on. But that I kind of expected it to break and I went into it and it did. So that's all part of the learning exercise. Atta reattach it. And now I've got to try and stick to this chunky edge. I guess. But without falling in the lake. Now if I could get across there. So that, that dark grey looks bad. Is this bad if I took if I were to, I kind of want to get back onto what looks like solid ice again. It's the edge that feels dangerous, but I don't feel I don't feel safe to do that. So I'm just going to stick to this extreme edge where it's like broken chunks already. It feels okay, and then if I get across this bit, will this hammer down, driver? Go go go! Right. Now I'm back on. But there, it looks like if I cut across that, that would break. So I'm going around it. I'm hoping I'm doing this the right way. It's fun, it's exciting stuff. Right, I don't trust that in, in front of me. That's going to break, I'm sure. So the next one is that way. This would be easier in the daylight, wouldn't it? Go around. This looks safe-ish. Right, hang on a minute. Where am I? Engine on. So, I think this is where I scan. Because there's no watchtowers here, so this is one of the areas that I need to be scanning. Um, activate the radar. Button 4. Show me what's in the area. And that's used 20 litres of fuel. It's a neat idea. I like that addition to the game. Right, okay. So, so yeah, that was worth doing because it's also showed me there's an upgrade up here. Not sure what it's for. But the next time I've got a truck in that area, I need to detour and grab that upgrade. Now I'm going to push on to this next mark. Don't need a waypoint because the mark is visible to me. Been 
this looks safe. I'm heading to the rocks over there because that's obviously going to be terrain rather than ice. Oops, a bit of suspension damage. And then I've got to try and work out how to get back onto the ice without going through. So again, that if I can get across this bit, is this solid? It looks it. That grey bit there isn't. Right, that, what I've just headed into doesn't look so good. Right, so that's that one. bit nervous with when the texture changes on the ice. I get a bit nervous. I'm enjoying it though. Right, now this, I don't like the look of that. The, the grey bits in the texture make me think that that's weakness in ice. Right, so that's that one. Now I'm going to gun it because there's a tree that could help me if I needed it. Not very often the devs put something there to reassure you, but thank you for that. And then I'm back on solid ground now. Albeit snow covered with rocks, but solid ground. Now what I don't know is whether there are patches of breakable ice underneath snow. So this is a fairly thin covering of snow. What I don't know is if it's if the devs are devious enough to put breakable ice underneath what looks like snow. So yeah, that'll be a bit interesting. At the moment, I'm assuming that if I'm driving on snow, I'm safe, but that may not be a solid assumption. Engine off, that's that task done. Track walker, that is better than nothing. You can make your way and that is good. We never haul anything heavy here anyway. Thank you for your help. Three grand. Thank you for your three grand. And then what's that done for me? There's a bunch of stuff here. I obviously need to get here. So there's a bunch of stuff there to look at. Um, I won't quite do a scan here. Yeah, I think I'll push a bit closer and do a scan in that little cluster of tasks. That is roughly where I want to go, which is only 300 meters away. And there's a little bit of a road there. So if I can get to that road, then I'll probably do a scan somewhere near there. Right, so we're now on a road of sorts. I am loving this map. It's, it's difficult, and I like that. Um, yeah, it's difficult in an enjoyable way. So here we are coming in on a bunch of things. So I think these are probably all things that I've already tagged, but let's just have a little look around this compound, whatever this is. So supplies delivery. Let's just check if I've got these already tagged. Supplies delivery I've already got tagged. Frozen in time. I've got tagged. Rural Splunker, I know I've got that one tagged. Alright, so these tasks are already tagged. That's fine. I do think this is a spot where it's worth me then running the radar. See what some of this other stuff is. So, although it uses 20 litres of fuel. I love the Northern Lights, that's brilliant. Uh, although it uses 20 litres of fuel, I think it's worth doing. So I just discovered a new thing that I hadn't got before. Oh, that's the Acteon. I'm very close to the Acteon. That's interesting. So Like Brothers is a, a vehicle rescue. Yeah, Like Brothers is a vehicle rescue. 
can't make out what that is. I don't know whether that's an Acteon. It's a four-wheeler, but I can't make out. I'm not familiar with the small-scale models. And then the Acteon is here with a service trailer, a maintenance trailer. Yeah, service trailer. And it's got no fuel. Interesting. That Acteon is a truck that I very much care about getting back to the garage and getting it sorted out. And then we've got another camp up here with a broken helicopter, or a helicopter, whether it's broken or not, I can't really tell. Some kind of cargo there. Uh, but it didn't expose any tasks for that, so I've probably got other things to deliver to there, but it's not like there's a task giver in there. And then we've got a trailer store. Okay, Andy. Frozen in time, rural splunker. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to go and get that Acteon, or at least try to. So I will drop the trailer here. Uh, I will take some fuel out of the trailer. So I haven't got a lot left for doing scanning, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I'd rather, I, I, it looks like I've got to put fuel in the Acteon. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay to recover the Acteon. I, I could, but I don't feel that. I think this is a different scenario to when I do that. I've been comfortable paying to recover when I've gone on a specific rescue mission, um, like a special expedition to get the Forester and so on. I'm comfortable paying for recovery. I'm not doing it on this because this is normal gameplay. This is not a special expedition. And to be fair, I. I I say comfortable, I, after I recovered, after I paid to recover the Aramatsu, I felt a little bit cheesy paying to recover it, given that I'd gone there to collect the thing, so I'd, I don't know, in any future expeditions I might make myself a rule that I've got to drive the thing back rather than pay to recover, because it kind of negates the challenge a little bit. Let's just work out which way I'm trying to go here. So I don't know what this terrain is like, but I want to try and at least get... I don't know whether the Acteon has to be um, repaired. It looks like it's got no fuel, but I don't know whether it's drivable, whether it needs to be repair points. I don't. I just don't know. So I want to go and have a look. The fact that it's got a service trailer right there is, is reassuring. Uh, this is going pretty slow. Slow enough to make me wonder if I had my handbrake on, but I haven't. Try and skip to the edges. This isn't a bad wading truck, I don't think. The low start, it's got a snorkel on it. But rather than fighting my way through mud. So it's not going to have good tyres on it by the look of it. The Acteon. Tools Acteon discovered. Engine off. And then it looks like there's fuel barrels or oil barrels parked up behind it. Um, it's got a one slot cargo on it. It's got no crane yet. Let's have a look. Can I just change into it? I can. So it's mine. So I don't have to do a task to collect it. That's now mine. That's good. I'm happy with that. And then... What's my state of repair? Oh, it's, it's, it's repaired. It's got no broken wheels. It's got some damage, but it's not... It's not completely knackered. Uh, let's take a bit of fuel out of the Scout. I don't know what it, this thing's fuel characteristics are like. Um, but really, it needs to get to the garage. I don't know how much fuel it would take to do that, but I don't want to leave the scout without any fuel. Interesting. Uh, so one thing I should be able to do, now that I've put a little bit of fuel in it. Uh, so it's engageable. Engine off is attach that trailer, and then now I should be able to repair myself. Yep, fully repaired. Obviously it needs a bodywork repair when it gets to the garage, but... I'm not going to try and tow this service trainer out with uh, with these tires because I think that would be a disaster. I want to drive this back. I want to get it back to garage because there's a lot of one-slot deliveries that I just want to use this truck for. 
I don't, I don't know if this Acteon can even drive with these wheels. But I think the most fun thing to do would be to just take all the fuel out of the Lodestar and have a go at getting this Acteon back, see how far I can get it. So I'm going to be bringing it down here, down here, across whatever this is, down this route, onto this ice, and then try and skirt it around and get back to the garage. I don't know whether this can drive itself out or not. It's pretty small, isn't it? Maybe I took maybe I just drag it out with a lodestar instead. Yeah. So act the unempty. And then I'm just gonna try and drag it out with the lodestar. Which I want to take back to the garage anyway. Probably. But the, the Lodestar pickup truck is bigger than the Acteon. That's quite funny. Um, tow rope. At the moment, no fuel, and I'm just going to drag it as a dead weight and then see how I get on. That's how I get on. It's on a rock though, isn't it? Pull myself forward so I'm not sat in mud. Bit of fuel in it. Start its engine so it can help me. Because this Acteon is one of the things I wanted to get, one of the reasons I came to Lake Cobbed anyway. Because at some point I'm going to use this. For a special expedition to go and get the Tatra Phoenix. You need a vehicle that can take one slot plus a crane. Right, I'm out of there, so I'll turn the engine off to save a bit of fuel on the towed vehicle. See if that see if I can still maintain some momentum. And try and follow this trail around. And I'll come back with that exploration trailer. Just be nice to get this Acti on if I can do it. What a beautiful map. Look at the terrain. Look at the stack of rocks up there on the ridge. It's just awesome terrain. Awesome map. Right, this is breakable ice. I can see that. So I'll try and go around the edge. Engine on, get it to help me a bit. actually see what it is that they say the trail is but I guess it's this looks a bit drifty to me uh, yeah 
It's not bad, Lark. Don't want to be doing that, Malarkey, mate. <laughs> I've got an autonomous winch, but there may not have been much to winch off. So that was a little bit of a moment for me. Maybe over these rocks is safer than going through the drifty snow. At least my tyres have some better traction on the rocks. Unless you belly out like that. So I've gone over the top of a hill here, but it is the trail that I was aiming for. Oh, that's actually, the trail was that way, but probably wasn't any better. Nice view though from the top of the hill. And then gravity on my side to go down the other side. But question is, can I cross? So that I, that looks like open water between me and where I want to be. Uh, so actually it looks like I've got to go to the right there if I can get across these rocks. Yeah, if I can get myself down onto the ice, and then I've got to—I think I've got to drive up that way and get around that water. You can kind of see the garage in the distance there, but seeing it and getting to it, two different things. Right, now I've got to get safely onto the black ice. <laughs> and the and obviously the um, Acteon has no snow no chains at all, so it's just So it's just pendulum around. That's quite funny. We'll be careful that doesn't jackknife me or cause me a problem in the low star, but. <laughs> that's funny. It's hilarious. Right, so that's the end of the water. So now I need to get, if I can, across here and try and pick up this road, I guess. find my way through this if I can find a bit that looks safe enough to travel it's a big if isn't it this is going to be breakable isn't it yeah gun it hammer down gun it gun it gun it go I'm in two lightweight trucks whoa that's that was a bit scary <laughs> that was a bit scary but fun go 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 If I'd have sunk then, I'd have blamed Friday. He told me hammer down. If I'd have sunk, I'd have blamed my instructor. Oh, well, I'm going to be doing a full repair in the garage of the Acteon anyway, because it needs to have body repair. Feeling good at the minute, feeling feeling optimistic. 
optimistic that I'm going to make it. I've got fuel in my um, pickup add-on, so if I can get... Right, so do I go up here? No, I don't. So I reckon... Continue around this way. And then I'm going to be looking to get across here and pick up this road. And then we're home and dry. What could possibly go wrong, right? doing so can I can I shortcut across this shortcuts make long delays or something so this is good ice I'm confident this is good ice the question is how do where do I get back on the road come on out Dion you can do it follow me baby Well, I didn't actually expect to recover the Acteon today, but I'm so pleased that we, we've managed to get it back to garage. That's brilliant. Right, now the Acteon has run out of fuel. So that used 27 litres being towed, and actually I could have turned the engine off once I got over that hill. For most of that snow stuff, that ice lake stuff, I probably could have just turned the engine off and dragged it. I don't think it was actually helping me much at all. New truck. Always exciting to have a new truck. And then I can refill the scout and go back and get the trailer in the next episode and carry on exploring. Uh, what's my fuel like at the moment? Very empty. Four litres. Look at that. I've got fuel in the in the add-on, but... Um, yeah. Just about managed to get to the cat. With out running out engine off one liter so refuel back the on full all full Probably the low star deserves a bodywork fix, but nah. Let's just focus on getting the Acteon in there and have a look at it before the end of the episode. New vehicle. So it's got engageable all-wheel drive, which is nice, and it's got an engageable diff. So you've got to, you know, it takes it takes some of the easy mode stuff that we have experienced out, and you have to actually think about it a bit more when you're driving it, which is nice. I love all my trucks, but some of them are a little bit too easy. There we go, Acteon, Tuz 16 Acteon, back in the garage. So full body repair, two and a half thousand, which will also repair the engine damage I did on the way and the suspension damage, done. Customize it. Um, so it's an S plus power to weight with that engine and then again a bit like the argument with the low star at the moment I'm not going to put bigger engines in it until I understand its fuel characteristics because it's only got 110 litre tank so at the minute I'll leave it with a stock engine until I, unless I decide that it's underpowered when I'm out driving it uh, I think I'm going to uh, as suggested in comments I'm going to buy a high range so that the high range, a li little bit less durable than off-road, but more fuel efficient slightly. So again, fuel is the challenge. So everything should be about what's the best for fuel consumption, really. I've already got the, the Ray suspension. I could buy active, so what's the difference? So I can choose, so that's, that's 10 grand. I've got raised already. 
10 grand to give me the ability to lower the suspension. Does it affect the tire choices? So if I want to put all chains on it, I need to put in... So I've already got this, it's free, so I'll just install it. And then let's have a look at tires. And I want to put 47 inch all chains on it. So that's 6,400. And then now if I look at the... Right, so active gets locked out if you've got the big chains on there, basically. Okay, so I'm glad I didn't buy the active because I do want... Generally, I think it's better to have... I guess if you did the 43-inch, the active suspension would work. But 47s are too big for active suspension to allow it to lower itself. So if this is a ridiculously unstable vehicle, I've got the option of coming back and putting slightly smaller wheels on it and then active suspension so that I can toggle stability mode. Uh, I'm going to do autonomous medium because that's kind of the point of this truck in a lot of ways. Is it's a medium vehicle, but it's I think the, it may be the only one that can take an autonomous medium. It's normally just scouts, and I don't think any of the other medium trucks can handle an autonomous winch. So that's going to give me, if it is unstable, at least I've got a chance to put it back on its wheels. Diff lock engagement is already done. I've already got a spare wheel on. Which I may have to take off to put a crane on. Uh, I don't expect to do a lot of wading on this map, but just for the sake of it, I'm going to have to put that on anyway. Tune through a bit of money here. Funny that it can take a log. I wouldn't really want to do long logs with this. Somebody's going to tell me in comments that it does fine, but I don't like the sound of that. So a loading crane. I can install that with a sideboard bed and it looks like the spare wheel stays on and is fine. I don't know what the... So it also looks like that would be able to tow a trailer because it's not a very long bed. It's a, it's a one slot bed, but that's awesome. I'm happy with that. What else is there? Maintenance add-on. Similar sort of deal to the Crocodile. Same class of vehicle as the Crocodile, but the Crocodile can't have an autonomous winch. Our roof rack, yes. Extra fuel. So I definitely want that. That is awesome. I expect this truck to get a lot of use on this map. Because there's not much there's not many deliveries to do, but quite a lot of them are one slot. What colour do I want to give it? I quite like a shame as no sort of vibrant two-tone. I quite like the bright colours. Partly because they stand out on thumbnails better. Quite like that blue. Let's go through all of the camos. Desert camo? Probably, probably grey just makes sense for the map we're on, doesn't it? White? Pink. Oh, I quite like purple. I haven't got any purple trucks at the minute. I am going to put that on it. And then I'm going to look at bumper choices. No, don't need them. They're not on at the moment, so I'm not going to fit those. Gives me better wheel clearance. Front bumper with a stock one. Crossbar with fog lights. I do like lights. Heavy duty. So how does that compare in terms of ground clearance? Although it's such a short nosed vehicle that it's probably not going to make a difference. That Hunter one doesn't really do... Doesn't have any extra lights on it, does it? No. So they've both got fog lights on. I'm going to take the slightly more expensive one just because I like the detailing of having the rope, the, the winch rope on there. This looks good. So there we go. We've got a purple beast. I think they might, yeah, I think maybe the lope has a, a bit of purple in its custom paint job, but. Um, I hope this vehicle lives up to how excited I am to have it. I'm just going to take it around and refuel, basically.
not planning on doing anything with it right now. Engine off. So, uh, fuel. So the Acteon is going to fill its roof rack up. Because I can't access the add-on on the cat. But what I can then do is change into the cat. And then... Because I wouldn't be able to access the Acteon's roof rack either. I can now... from my fuel carrier, which I hope this is the first time I've used any fuel out of it, but I can use that to then fill up everything in reach. Job done. And that's just used uh, nearly 400 litres of fuel. So yeah, fuel, fuel is the biggest challenge so far. But I'm really pleased with that. I like that truck. Didn't expect to get it, and as you as you know, I aimed and ammed on whether or not it would even be possible to tow it back. But luckily it was, and I'm pleased. So, that feels like a good place to end the episode. I will work out how to splice in the bit where I didn't narrate it properly at the start. And hopefully, you've seen an episode you enjoyed, and that it all made sense to you, even though in my head it got a little bit confusing. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for the support. Um, if you've got this far and you haven't already hit the like and subscribe button, I'd very much appreciate it if you did. It does help the channel grow. But the main thing is I hope you're enjoying the episode. I am enjoying Lake Covt. It's, it's a blast. It's, it's difficult. It's challenging. But it's, it's good fun. So, yeah, I hope, hope you're enjoying it as well. And I hope to see you in the next episode. In the meantime, thank you and... Goodbye.